Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear viewers, to a live episode of Viewers Pulse, and I'm your host for the program, Junaid Da. Dear viewers, I'd like to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this fantastic opportunity to come together and to serve his beautiful deen once again. Not just that, but also we thank Allah for allowing us, giving us the opportunity to make mention of the name of the best of mankind, and that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, Viewers Pulse is your program. It's an hour's long, and effectively it's the time for you to engage and for me to listen. But that's the plan. So we have a number of things we want to engage in today. There are two main aims. Viewers Pulse looks at number one, previous programs. What's been going on in the last week? What are the ups and downs? What programs have people really enjoyed? Where have people's comments and, and feedbacks been coming from? So we're going to be looking at a number of different uh, clips of the events or programs that have gone by. Also, the second objective of Viewers Pulse is to look into programs that are about to come. And we have an insight into a fantastic program uh, which is coming up relating to the Quran and relating to children. And you will see all the details of that program coming up very shortly. Not just that, but we also have uh, the main man involved in that program on the phone to answer some of our questions about his ideas and what he is bringing forward. Dear viewers, Viewers Pulse, once again, is your program. And we really want to hear your thoughts, your ideas, your feedback, anything that you have on your mind. Get involved, get engaged, and speak to us. And not just that, but even if you have criticism, you want to make some changes, you want to make some improvements, but obviously positive criticisms, then please do get involved and please do allow uh, yourselves to, to express yourselves freely. There is no censorship. You can go forward and we will welcome all of your thoughts and all of your comments. Now, you're probably wondering how can you do that? How can you get in touch? with Huda TV. There are a number of different ways. First and foremost, the most direct way, and you can see that on your screens right there, that is via phone. If you pick up your phone, you can call us on two numbers, both of them there. If you're calling outside of Egypt, then please don't forget to use the code, which is 002 inside of the brackets. Call us, give us your comments, give us your questions, get involved, you're live inside uh, the studio, and you will see the numbers there running across your screens. Now, dear viewers, for whatever reason, if you can't pick up your phone, um, for whatever difficult reason that is, there are a number of other ways that you can get in touch with us or communicate with us as well. First, or secondly, should I say, it is through email. And our email address is as follows, pulse at huda.tv. You can see that also running there across your screens, pulse at huda dot tv please do email us we do have a team dedicated to responding to your emails maybe at times they're a bit slow but that's because they're overwhelmed and maybe at times they respond straight away and that's because mashallah they're working hard so we hope to get in touch with you and to respond as soon as we can so do get involved via email as well so dear viewers once we've moved over from the emails we can also communicate via facebook and facebook is one of my favorite mediums do get involved in facebook you can see all of our activities you can see all of our programs there on facebook regular updates and our address is there running across your screens as well if you go to facebook just type in huda tv very simple and uh, you can get all of our access not just that but also our views don't forget to share the page don't forget to watch the programs and don't forget to like the items as well mashallah our page now is increasing from over 300,000 likes. And that's for your efforts, for your work. So we thank you very much. But please continue. Please share the page. Please invite people. And inshallah ta'ala, we will be more successful with the help of Allah and with your uh, help as well. Now, on the Facebook page, there is a beautiful link. If you click on that link, it will take you to our official uh, YouTube webpage. And that is uh, Huda TV. Very simple. And on there, 
you will see a number of different bits of information. From amongst the most important information on our official Hoday TV page is the itinerary. So you can see all of our programs. You can see them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, some of them live, some of them repeat. And I'm going to go through some of these programs with their timings and their repeat timings as well. So you've got to pay special attention. But the website does have the information there as well. So if you miss anything I say, you can always go uh, to the web page and get the official information and see what the channel is also doing behind uh, the camera. So that's the official page. Uh, dear viewers, also another form of communication is through Twitter. I strongly encourage you to jump onto Twitter and to subscribe uh, to our channel, which is Huda TV channel. Now, why would you want to subscribe to Twitter? Twitter, because you'll be in direct connection with us through Facebook. So whenever there's anything new coming to you on Facebook, it will come straight onto your Twitter account. You will hear your phone bleep. You'll hear whatever device you're using, and you'll be in constant uh, connection with Huda TV. So do subscribe to us on Twitter as well. Dear viewers, our next mode of communication is through YouTube, and that's extremely important. If you jump up onto YouTube and you type in Huda TV, you will see our page. Now, why do I say it's important? It's because we are a TV channel. So you can watch us there, live stream. You just got to press the button and you'll see all of our programs live. And you can see all of our previous programs also archived. So you can watch them according to date, according to time, according to title, as you like. And not just that, but one of the main features is the fact that you can get involved in discussions. All the videos there are open. You can enter or type in whatever your thoughts are, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whatever it is, whether it's something controversial, whether it's something non-controversial, you're more than likely to get involved, and we will also get involved in a, in a discussion, in engagement. So do involve yourselves there. And finally, also YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe uh, to our channel so we can also hope uh, to increase our viewership on YouTube. Please do that as well. And dear viewers, the last mode of communication is through Skype. Our Skype address is there running across your screens as well. That's Huda underscore TV. So do become our friends on Skype. Join us there. We are mostly green, so you can engage in discussions, talk, typing, however you feel comfortable, and we can take things there. And we hopefully will be able to set up a Skype line where we can also talk in the studio via Skype. So free calls. So do join us and do become our friends um, on uh, or on Skype. Dear viewers, as you are aware, every week we have a question. This is your opportunity to get involved, your opportunity to pick up the phone or jump up onto Facebook uh, and give us uh, your thoughts and your opinions. The question this week is regarding our live program, uh, Huda Tonight. So the question is, what topics, what topics would you really like to hear discussed on Huda Tonight? Would you like to hear more political discussions? Would you like to hear um, more political discussions? And you can see the question there. It's there running across your screens as well. What subjects do you enjoy? Do you want things to do with family matters, like, for example, divorce or marriage? Or do you want to hear about political issues? What's going on in the world? What's going on in this country and that country? Or do you want to know more about tafsir and Quran, what's inside of the Quran? It's your choice. Get involved and give us your opinion and give us your thoughts. The question is there on Facebook as well. Go to uh, our official page, uh, Facebook page for the TV. You'll see the post and you can give us your comments. Now, as promised, we have a number of different reports for you today. So we're going to move very fast, so you've got to stay with me. The first report is a very special program, an upcoming program, which is talking about the Quran, but from a specific angle. Quran for kids. I'm not going to say much more. I want you to watch this report. And then when we come back, we'll get some comments on it. And we'll also get in contact uh, with the main man behind the program. So let's move over to our very first report. And I will see you in just a few moments. <laughs> He is the Malik. What's Malik? What's Malik? What's Mulk? Malik is what? Malik is king. King. He is Malik, the owner. He is the king of all the kings. He is the owner of the Malik Yawmiddin. The owner of everything. He is the owner of the earth because he is the one who made it, right? He is the owner of everything. We come to this life, we leave this life behind us. He, there is an owner for it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, he is going to be clearly the owner. 
maybe not it's not as clear right now because that's my house I own it so this is my car how come it's a loss it's mine right but in the day of judgment nobody will have a car nobody will have a house the earth itself is not going to be there Allah would say which means what to whom belongs the kingdom the kingdom the kingdom the ownership of everything is whose today is for whom no, nobody will answer because everybody's dead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord will answer and he will say everything all the kingdom belongs to who? Allah al-wahid the one and only al-qahar the one who is above everybody and the one who subdued subdues everybody and, 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 and controls everything subhanahu wa ta'ala Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to viewers after watching that short report of an upcoming program, a fantastic program uh, about Quran and kids. Now, isn't it amazing to know when you see people struggling, working hard, educating children about the Holy Quran? Working with children is not everyone's expertise, everyone's field, but mashallah, there are certain people that Allah has given the skill, the qualifications, and the patience to deal with these children. Now, we have uh, the, the brother who is responsible, Sheikh Amr Dabur, who is on the phone. We're going to ask him about uh, his upcoming program. Let's get some inside, inside information. If I can begin, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Amr. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very well. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, doing great. Very good to see you, brother. How's everything going on? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Sheikh Amr, I want to ask you a question. Uh, many people have programs about the Quran, but in a very kind of serious kind of environment. You are working with children. What inspired you to, to do a program which is Quran for kids? Well, I, I like to work with kids, mashallah, and uh, to my surprise, it's, uh, it's not as... Uh, easy as many people might think yet it's very enjoyable to me because they do ask a lot of questions that that i find very uh inspiring and very uh motivated and i like to, to work with kids and subhanallah they 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 i learn from them to be honest i learn from them because some of their questions they cannot even uh answer and i have to uh, go ahead and search and uh and learn for myself so i i want to like I, I like to work with kids and uh, I, I, I do learn from them uh, excellent uh, uh, Sheikh Hamad, if I could also ask you about some of the details of this program what are the viewers expecting to see about so asking you about the content can you say this again I can't I can't hear you sure uh, well. I'm, I'm asking you about the content of the program what are the viewers expecting to see okay the concept uh, uh, is the Qur'an. We are revolving around some meanings and stories from the Qur'an. We are trying to, uh, you know, look into the Qur'an as our uh, main kind of content that we, that we are revolving around. We are talking about the story of the people of Al-Kahf, the people of the cave. We are touching on other stories in there. We are mainly talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how did he describe himself in the Quran? I'm getting a lot of questions as we are going from the kids. And many of these questions are really very, you know, uh, eye-opening. So okay. I did something like this in the States. And many of the, uh, many, I mean, I did it I did it in the States and I, I received a lot of uh, uh, interaction from the kids. And that's why I thought to do it here in Al Huda, okay. and hopefully, inshallah, uh, all the viewers will enjoy it. Okay, excellent, uh, Sheikh Amr. Also, a question: uh, All of us we love to hear stories, uh, but more importantly, children. How do the children respond when you teach them about the stories inside of the Quran? Some of the stories, like you mentioned, the stories of the Kahf, very interesting, uh, and some a little bit complicated, maybe difficult for children uh, to understand. How do you come across that challenge? Well, again, uh, it looks to me, that's my, my little observation in there, that many of the parents, teachers, imams, and adults at large, they do underestimate the 
capabilities of the kids and the power of the kids. And when you watch this program, you will know what I'm talking about. Because the kids, they, do, they did ask me questions about things you wouldn't even believe. They ask questions about Adam, the predestination, how things work. If Allah, we're talking about the story of Adam. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. And they were asking questions like, if Allah knew ahead of time that Adam is going to do this or that, so why did he create it? Which is like a very complicated question even for adults. Right. They, they did ask these kind of questions because they are wondering and they need a, an answer. And these, these are the very questions that we, that we need to address with our kids. And nothing in our deen and our religion is hard or difficult because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing us, is addressing all of these issues in the Quran. And, and when you, you know, put it in such a way that's understandable to the kids, especially if it comes through a story, they do, you know, uh, take it. It makes sense for them. And that's exactly what we did. And okay, all excellent. of these questions were, like, they came up without even privilege. Uh, we just discussing things as we go. Receive questions from them, and we try to look into them. And sometimes they didn't even... Uh, uh, like get the chance to talk about to continue the one story for example because they are asking a lot of questions and, and discussion is coming up as we are going. Okay excellent uh, also Sheikh Ahmed we saw a number of pictures there across the screen uh, showing yourself and the different children involved in the program uh, I, I'm a bit cu curious to ask uh, was there a different response from uh, the male children and the female children or were they the same kind of uh, curiosity? I, I believe, you know, they, we are different in our curiosity, regardless of being male or female. But generally speaking, that's my, my observation. Sometimes they receive uh, very interesting questions from females. You okay. know, they, they want to know, and they, they are very, you know, open to ask questions. And, and it really depends on the person himself, male or female, boy or girl. But I, I do that in, in, uh, in my mosque in there, and, and it's, it's exactly the same thing. Once you open a topic for discussion for the kids and you give them the chance to talk, you will receive an amazing things. Being it questions or discussions or, you know, things that they add with their fitra, with their open mind and heart, being pure and not touched with anything outside, you will, uh, you will find it very, very interesting. Okay, excellent. Also, Sheikh Amr, I would like to ask you about your greater goal or greater objective with this program. Hopefully, not just the children involved in your program, uh, but those who are watching across the world, be that in Asia, Africa, Europe, what's your goal uh, with these children or the viewers in general? The goal is very clear, is to start a connection with the Qur'an. And a connection with the Qur'an can come in so many ways, and none of these ways are conflict or in, in conflict with one another. Some like to memorize Qur'an, that's okay, you can memorize it, but it's not the only way to connect with the Qur'an. Some like to read it and, and read it in a nice voice and everything, and it, this is another way of connecting with the Qur'an. Some like to focus more on the meaning and the tafsir, and this is also a very good objective. In this program, we try to get a little bit of everything, if you want. We recited some ayat together in a good voice, and mashallah, some of the kids, actually all of them, they had good voice. We got the chance to read it together in a good voice, to enjoy it, to enjoy the recitation of the Qur'an. We got the chance to, you know, like they, they recited, we got the chance to look into the meaning, as I said, and look into the stories and learn things together. I opened the floor for them many times. What did you learn from these ayat, from these verses? And they added a lot of lessons that they learned from it. So the, the, the main title was, is there is that like uh, start a connection with the Quran, reading, memorizing, learning, and uh, like being connected to it. Okay, excellent. Uh, and Sheikh Ahmed, my final question is, is about your future goals and your future uh, plans. What do you hope to do in the future? Well, I hope inshallah in the future we can do more and more of these interactive programs where, uh, you know, there are various ways of, of uh, teaching and learning and education process. Uh, the most uh, common form as far as the Islamic education is a teacher and student, where somebody is, is one way thing, like somebody is, is pouring information and the other side is uh, receiving. 
uh, what I'm trying to introduce in this program and hope, inshallah, in the future to do is to have some kind of interaction where we can together probe the information and look into information and, and, and make that come through questions and through, you know, uh, mind uh, an inspiring kind of, of thing where we can talk and we listen to the other person. What did you learn? What, what can you add to that? So interaction, this is what I'm looking uh, to do, inshallah, especially if it has to do with the Qur'an, because Qur'an is an ocean, is, is the ocean that everybody can take from it and, it and it never ends. That's what it's meant for. So inshallah, we can do more and more of the programs, that, uh, especially those that have to do with the Qur'an, and we can quench uh, like our thirst for knowledge and for uh, deen, inshallah, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially with the kids and maybe hopefully with the youth, older, you know, ages, and, and, and everybody. That's Qur'an is for all. Okay, excellent. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Amr, for giving us your time and giving us insight into your program. We appreciate that very much, and hopefully we're looking forward to the airing of your program. You are most welcome, Brother Junaid, and I'm in my way right now, leaving Egypt to the state. I make dua for everybody. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the benefit and the blessing of the Qur'an and uh, use us always for da'wah and for making such wonderful programs, inshallah, and accept it. I mean, thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Amr. May Allah give you a safe trip. And I really, really do like uh, the, the idea of this program, dear viewers. Uh, unfortunately, many a times when we think about learning the Quran, we think of it as a very traditional kind of boring way to say the truth. We sometimes, even some of the children, are afraid to go learn the Quran because the environment is so strict. But yet, you have an excellent opportunity here to watch this program, Quran with kids, where you can relax in a free environment and explore the Quran together and freely. So do take advantage of this program and also uh, don't forget that it will be upcoming so you will hear about all of its details airing time so on and so forth uh, very uh, shortly now we have another report coming up and this one is about correcting your recitation fantastic program where you are planning or aiming to perfect your recitation tajweed of how to read the quran uh, correctly but we have a phone call okay Okay, we have a phone call from California, Um Sada. Okay, Assalamu Alaikum, sister. Assalamu Alaikum, brother. Um, I have a question. Can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Okay, my question is, uh, if a couple has no kids and no parents, so if a wife dies, who, who will be the virus and how much share will the virus get? And in case the husband dies, who will be the waris and how much share they will get and how much the wife will get? And in, I mean, in, in case both the wife and the husband working and they, whatever they had is, uh, uh, is from both husband and wife earnings. And in another scenario, if the wife is not working, what will be the share and, you know, who will be the waris for the wife and the husband if one of them dies. Jazakallah khair and kaseera, brother. Okay, thank you very much, Um Sada, for uh, that question. Your question is talking about inheritance and, and the fiqh of inheritance. We will note that question down. I've written it down, and we will present the question to our Sheikh Muhammad Salah, uh, who is qualified to deal with detailed fiqh questions. And you will see the answer coming up on Ask Huda, or you will see it being put up uh, on Facebook if you engage with us on Facebook and follow up with us, inshallah ta'ala, and we will give you your answer uh, through Sheikh Muhammad Salah. So thank you very much for calling us all the way from California. Dear viewers, do get involved. Your questions, comments, whatever you have, bring them forward. And the question for today as well uh, is about Huda uh, tonight. What topics, what ideas would you like to have discussed on Huda tonight? Maybe as Sister Um Sada would say, maybe inheritance law. That's a good discussion. So we can get people's opinions and views. Do get engaged with us. I want to read you just one comment before we move over uh, to our next report. And this comes from... Ali Abu Bakr who answers our question on Facebook and he says uh, he would like to hear about a topic uh, which is respect in Islam towards family affairs and he says thank you very much so number one we have a first suggestion talking about family affairs respecting your mother respecting your father dear viewers do call us do go to Facebook I'm reading out your comments so do get involved and do get uh, interactive with us here on the program dear viewers let's move over to our second report and this is correct 
your recitation. Let's watch this, and then when we come back, we'll get some commentary on that as well. <laughs> حجتهم داحضة عند ربهم وعليهم غضب ولهم عذاب شديد الله الذي أنزل الكتاب بالحق والميزان وما يدريك لعل الساعة قريب يستعجل بها الذين لا يؤمنون بها والذين آمنوا مشفقون منها ويعلمون أنها الحق ألا إن الذين يمارون في الساعة لفي ضلال الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز من كان يريد حرف الآخرة نزد له في حرفه ومن كان يريد حرف الدنيا نؤته منها وما له في الآخرة من نصيب أم لهم شركاء شرعوا لهم من الدين ما لم يأذن به الله ولولا كلمة الفصل لقضي بينهم وإن الظالمين لهم عذاب أليم ترى الظالمين مشفقين مما كسبوا وهو واقع بهم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات في روضات الجنات لهم ما يشاءون عند ربهم ذلك هو الفضل الكبير بارك الله فيك جزاك الله خيرا شيخ عبد الخالق Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, after watching uh, that short clip about correcting your recitation. Now, I can't help smiling, but whenever you hear the recitation of the Holy Quran, do you not feel that peace and that tranquility inside of your hearts? Do you not wish that you had a beautiful voice and you could read the Quran in the most perfect way, like the way our brother Abdul Khaliq was reading uh, the Quran? Shall I tell you a small secret? And you know, this will make your hearts very soft. His recitation was beautiful, agree? At the same time, do you know that our brother Abdul Khaliq is blind and he's memorized the Quran? He reads that through the top of his mind. Many of us, Allah has blessed us with all five senses and yet we are struggling to read the Quran. Not because it is difficult, because we are lazy, that's the truth. So let's get engaged, let's read the Quran, let's learn how to read it properly. It's the word of Allah. It's the purpose or the reason why he has created us is to read this Quran and to apply what's inside it. So get engaged and use uh, this program to learn how to recite the Quran. Also uh, find yourself uh, appropriate teachers and channels and learn how to recite the Quran properly. Dear viewers, before we move over to a very short break, I want to remind you again of our question. You see it there on the screen, it was there. But the question, oh, it's back. So the question is there, what topics would you like to have discussed on Huda tonight? I want to read you one comment before we go to our break. This comes from Abdullahi Bashir Ruma, 
who contacts us on Facebook and he says that he would like to have a discussion about Tawheed. That's fantastic, excellent. So many people are getting involved in the channel, talking to us via phone, via Facebook. So please do get engaged and do uh, discuss with us your programs as well. Before we go very quickly, I would just like to say to Abdullah Bashir that the topic of Tawheed is discussed in a live program every Wednesday. The program is called Gems of the Heart. So do get involved and do watch that as well. Let's take a short break here, take a little rest, and then when we come back, we'll continue with the review of further programs. So I'll see you in just a few moments. Our guide is the Quran, our religion is Islam. It's calling us to establish this hiwar, this dialogue between ourselves and between the non-Muslims, to use hikmah. The waves are coming, you're trapped. Fitna every is coming everywhere. How, how can I get out of this fitna that I'm in? Uh, send me the rope. Why did Allah send the Quran to you, to all of mankind? As a source of guidance, as a, as a kitab, a blessed book to be reflected upon. And secondly, the bath, the resurrection. Preparing yourself for Yomul Qiyamah when you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Aqeedah, this is the core of Aqeedah, this is the focus of the Quran. They want these dialects and these slangs to spread so the Arabs themselves can't even understand the Quran properly. This is a, ch this is a choice you have to make now. Because once the angel of death comes to you and takes your soul, there's no turning back, there's no other choice. So from that, I've really come to understand that to be a Muslim, to be someone who says they've surrendered and submitted to the will of God, is to be in harmony with everything around you and to be a benefit to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, he gave us a life plan. He told us what to do. He, he gave us, you know, goals and what he expects from us. He has roots in Islam because the first man who was created, Adam, he was neither a Jew or a Christian, but he submitted yeah, himself to God, Abraham. He didn't submit to anyone in creation. He didn't even hear in any of these religions. But when he was told to do what? Submit to the will of God. That's Islam. Attached to his preconceived notions. Yes. And if he looks with an objective eye and an open heart, he'll see it. Unless Allah for some reason has something over his eyes because of something that we don't know is in his heart. Uh, you had from 1980 to 2005, you had the FBI data report showing that now from all these years that only 6% had any links to uh, Islam. 94% were people who had nothing to do with Islam. This is the thing, this is the thing Hoda TV strives to remain the premier English language Islamic channel in the world. And to do so, we need your input. Send us your thoughts, suggestions and feedback through email at feedback at hoda.tv. Hoda TV is committed to helping others. So why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide? Take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV. Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. After a very short break there, joining us live on our program, Viewers Pulse. Dear viewers, I'd like to remind you again of our question for today. And we are talking about our live program, which is Huda Tonight. Now, what subjects or what topics would you like to have discussed on this fantastic 
uh, live program. We've had a number of people give us their comments over Facebook. I want to make mention of one other comment that's just come through uh, on our Facebook page, and I encourage all of you to put your comments down as well or pick up the phone however you feel and communicate with us. This next comment comes from Sister Aisha Bint uh, Zena, and she really writes a beautiful comment, and she writes, uh, she would like to hear the topic of modesty. You can see it there on your screens. She said, modesty, especially regarding dressing for both males and females. Jazakallah khairan for the wonderful programs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all abundantly in this life and may he give you a genital for those uh, in the final abode. Now, dear viewer, sister Aisha makes mention of modesty. And you know what's really surprising or what's really beautiful about what she says? Uh, she says regarding dressing for both males and females. And she puts the males before the females. The dressing for the females, I think, is fairly obvious or fairly easy. Most people understand what the hijab is and what it should look like. But at the same time, what about the men? This is a topic that not many people talk about, but it's very important. There is also modesty when it comes to clothing for the guys. And it's a little bit embarrassing, but I think I'm going to take that bold step and make a mention of it here on TV. Many of our youngsters nowadays, due to fashion or whatever reasons, are wearing very tight clothing. And many a times you find their t-shirts or their tops to be very short. So unfortunately, may Allah forgive us all, Unfortunately, when you see them in prayer, going into sujood, going into prayer, unfortunately you will see what is Islamically classified as their aura, meaning their back. You will see that become naked. You will see aspects of their body become shown. And I don't think anybody likes the view of seeing somebody else's back naked in prayer. So men need to take care of their modesty, need to take care of what the clothes they wear, and sisters also, and uh, that's just a gentle reminder. Before we move over to the next report, we talked about uh, correct your recitation. I just want to give you the timings for that program so you can uh, be tuned with that. Every Thursdays, correct your recitation will be on every Thursdays at 9 o'clock Mecca time. That's the live program every Thursdays, 9 o'clock Mecca time. And if you miss it and you want to watch the repeat, the rerun, that will be at 1 o'clock Mecca time in the morning. So you can watch the live or you can watch the rerun. Now, let's move over to our third report of the day, and that is our fantastic program, Quran in Depth. And this particular report is talking about a famous story of Osama bin Zaid when he was at war. So let's watch this report, and then when we come back, I'll give you the airing times of this program as well. <laughs> And also Osama ibn Zayd, radiallahu anhu, this is something that happened to him, in which he was in the war, and one of the disbelievers, Osama ibn Zayd, was about to kill him in the war, in the fighting, during the fighting. So this man, this disbeliever, he said, La ilaha illallah. And still, Osama ibn Zayd killed him. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa kept repeating to Osama ibn Zayd, radiallahu anhu, you killed him. When he said, La ilaha illallah, you killed him when he said, La ilaha illallah, condemning his act. Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, qala muta'awwidhan. He said it to protect himself. He was not sincere in saying it. He said it when he was, he saw the matter so clear that he is going to be killed. And again, this is in war. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept repeating the same statement to Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, condemning his action. And he said, did you check, did you open his heart? Did you open his heart to see whether he is saying it as a way to protect himself from being killed or he is sincerely saying it for the sake of Allah? This is not our job to make sure that people are saying things sincerely or not. We just take whatever they say and their actions. So the Prophet ﷺ condemned the action uh, of Usama ibn Zayd عن, to the extent of which that Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, he said, I wish I never existed till after these verses were revealed because of how much severe condemnation he received from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he radiallahu anhu was doing something for the sake of Allah, the, the highest level of matters of Islam when he was struggling and fighting for the sake of Allah. So this is a very important verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to teach the companions عنهم, to make sure 
that not to rush into actions unless it's based on facts and not based on doubtful matters. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after watching that short report about Quran in depth. I just want to make a very small comment on that program, uh, especially on that story which involved uh, the companion Sama bin Zaid. And they were the best of the companions of the best of people after the Prophet. Yet you hear the Prophet uh, telling Osama bin Zaid about his mistake. And we can learn from this story. One of the main things we can learn from this story is about judging other people, Muslims and non-Muslims. Unfortunately, we've become very judgmental when we see a person doing something or not doing something and we judge him. He's a good Muslim, he's a bad Muslim, he's religious, he's not religious. We should not be judgmental. Leave the affairs of the heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because you may find a brother who doesn't have a beard, you will think that he's not religious or you will think that he's not God-fearing. Allah knows what's inside of his heart, even though he should confined to the orders of Allah. The same thing, maybe you find a sister who isn't fully looking the way you would like her to appear, but yet she is a worshipper of Allah. We should encourage people positively and not be judgmental at the same time. Dear viewers, that program is called Iron In Depth, and that program comes on Sundays. So every Sunday you can see it at 7 o'clock, that's Mecca time in the evenings. So you can enjoy that live at 7 o'clock Mecca time. And if you miss the live program, you can watch the rerun, uh, which is at 2 o'clock in the morning. So you can watch it live or you can watch it on the rerun. So, dear viewers, let me go back to the question for the day. We've got more comments coming in on Facebook. MashaAllah, today you are very active, keeping me, making me work very hard. So we have some more comments. And the question is as follows. What topics would you like to hear on Huda tonight? And the comment we have is from uh, Sister uh, Hadiqa Saeed, and she says uh, she would like to have a topic about how to raise pious children, Islamic guidance for parents for raising children. And subhanAllah, that is such an important subject. You know why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that when you die, all of your deeds will come to an end, except for three. And one of those three, he said, a pious child that makes dua for you. So if you give your children the right education, the right tarbiyah, the right upbringing, when you enter into your grave and your children, they recite Quran, they pray, they make dua for you, you will receive the hasanat, the good deeds, while you are inside your grave. So that is a fantastic comment coming from Sister Hadiqa. We will try our best to have a program uh, on that subject as well. Let me read the next comment which comes from Brother Sharif. And he says, Assalamu alaikum. I would want you to discuss the subject of Islamic sects. Now, that's a very controversial subject, but one that we should discuss. We should not shy away from controversy. That is a subject which unfortunately is responsible for the division and the downfall of the Muslims. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that through unity we have our strength. Through unity we have our honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it himself. He said, وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you and together. But unfortunately, we do have the subject of Islamic sects, and this is the cause of disunity, the cause of our weaknesses, and the cause for lots of people uh, arguing, shouting, and not befriending one another. So inshallah, we should have a program on that as well. I really do like that idea. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Sharif, for that. Um, let's move over to our next report. and. The Facebook page is still open and the phone run lines are also open. So do call us, give us your comments or questions live in the studio. If you can't, jump on to, onto Facebook just like our viewers here and give us your comment. What subjects would you like to hear? Uh, what topics would you like to discuss? And don't feel shy. Anything, even if it's something very controversial, say how you feel. If you express yourself, this is the only way we can understand each other and progress collectively. Now, let's move over to the next report and this is uh, the program Gardens of the Pious. And the subject in this report is giving and sacrificing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's watch this report and then when we come back, I'll keep my comments as brief as I can and allow you uh, to give your comments. I'll see you in just a few seconds. <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
if you really aim to achieve piety and righteousness, and the righteousness is the righteousness of the heart, if you want to really purify your heart, and the act of charity given in a charity does so, Allah the Almighty said, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا So given in a charity, sanctify oneself, purifies one's heart. So Allah the Almighty in this ayah promised that if you want to attain piety, there is only one way to do it. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ you will not attain piety unless you spend of that which you love, of that which you like, of that which you love to keep for yourself and maintain. Not only of that which have no use for you anymore. As we all understand that a lot of people, I'm talking to those who live in the West and they are familiar with my uh, you know, conversation, by the end of the uh, year, they take their old clothes, they take their old shoes, they take some of those uh, belongings which they don't need anymore, and they put them in boxes and they donate them to Salvation Army for Innocence. They get a receipt so that they can claim it of their tax. Where is the niya? The niya behind that is to write it of your tax. Okay, this, this is not given sincerely for the sake of Allah. You don't even know who is taking this and whether it's eligible or not. Another person, whether it is the end of the year or right now, he just heard that somebody is in need or a family is in dire need. And he is in a financial restraint himself. So he looked into their circumstances and said, by Allah, they are in need more than myself. So he gave them what he has or what he was saving to prepare his daughter to get married or to send his son to college or to get an operation. This is a quality which only a believer may achieve and obtain, which is to give what he loves. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, where we just watched a report about gardens of the pious and Sheikh Muhammad Sarah is talking about giving in charity not just any charity like he made mention of your old clothes or your old shoes which is fantastic we should do that and we should give that as well but he's talking about a specific verse from the Quran and explaining what that verse means now dear viewers when we are giving in charity just like uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sarah said the key in that whole sentence about giving is mimma tuhibbun from that money which you love you know you have two pockets in your trousers you have the front pocket where you keep the change the metal and then you have the back pocket where you keep all the notes and your bank card the mimma tuhibbun is talking about the back pocket where you keep your cards and where you keep the notes so next time you're giving in sadaqah have the intention to give from that which you love and give it from the wealth which you are saving there are people across the world that are desperate need of our help my help your help even if it is old clothing wallahi dear brothers and sisters you see the situation of our brothers and sisters especially in syria these days they need these clothings they need the money they need the support and it's our job to do so dear viewers let me also remind you of the program gardens of the pious uh, which airs every monday and every Wednesday, 9 o'clock, Mecca time, that's in the evening, watch it live. If you miss the live program, you can watch the repeat, uh, which is at 1 o'clock in the morning. So you can watch the program uh, in two ways, uh, live, or you can watch it as a repeat. Now, dear viewers, we've had a number of people uh, engage with us about our, our question for the day. What topics would you like to have discussed on Huda tonight? And we also have one brother by the name of Sharif. He makes mention of the subject of unity in Islam. And wallahi, this is one of my favorite subjects, unity in Islam, because we are in such a desperate need to be united. We need to put our petty differences, and I will say that again, our petty differences aside and come to the points of unity. We have one God, we have one book, we have one final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we differ? Why do we have differences? It's one, one, one all the way, but yet we are many. Why? Because the deficiencies are in us, not in Islam. Let's come together. 
let's be united let's be strong and inshallah ta'ala our golden days the way we were will return and Allah will give us that honor that is uh, once again and finally I'd like to make mention that tonight's program Huda tonight our live program uh, will be a very special program where we're going to be talking about the topic of divorce the topic actually is titled the art of divorce why because unfortunately nowadays we find that many brothers and sisters do not know the correct methodology for divorce and they are using the wrong methods methods that anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us tonight live on Huda tonight and you will see a discussion on this procedure and the correct way to do so I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in. I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity. And I would also like to thank the Huda team for making these programs come together. They are the ones who make these reports. They are the ones who sit behind the cameras and make these things possible. Once again, thank you very much. I will see you next week at the same time, at the same place. They're all waving at me now. At the same time, at the same place. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say, let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone, Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda, we'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say, let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone, Huda is the light in your home. Remember you are not alone.